Thank you all for joining us for today's webinar, Celebrating Musquash Head and the Growing Trail Network. My name is Paula Noel, and I am the Program Director for New Brunswick with the Nature Conservancy of Canada, and I will be your moderator today. To begin, the Nature Conservancy of Canada respectfully acknowledges that the Musquash Estuary Nature Preserve is within the traditional territory of the Wallistigwe, Pescadimacati, and Mi'kmaq nations of the Wabanaki Confederacy. For millennia, they have worked to protect these landscapes and the life these areas sustain. We thank these original caretakers and acknowledge the ongoing work and presence of Indigenous peoples here today. Uh, so to start us off, I am very pleased to introduce Kevin McNamara, who is the Chair of the Atlantic Regional Board uh, for the Nature Conservancy of Canada, and also a member of our National Board. Uh, Kevin previously served as Nova Scotia's Deputy Minister of Health and Wellness, as well as Deputy Minister of uh, Environment in Nova Scotia, where he led large projects of provincial, regional, and national scope. Kevin volunteers with many other community initiatives, uh, and including uh, his work as the President of the Nova Scotia Division of the Canadian Mental Health Association. Uh, thank you, Kevin, and uh, I'll let you bring a few words. Thank you very much, Paula. And I want to thank everyone who is joining us today uh, with this great celebration. As the Atlantic Chair, it's always exciting to see new projects starting out and uh, that we're able to join. I also want to thank the over 300 volunteers who donated to this project. And that we're always proud as well to partner with community groups such as the Lawrenville, Love of Lawrenville. I also want to thank our staff who do a tremendous job on a regular basis uh, to making us uh, be a successful organization. I also believe it's a blessing to many who have been uh, having issues during this COVID time as nature has been a great way for people to celebrate getting out, particularly for isolation. We also know that, and as mentioned, I do am involved in mental health as those with stress and mental health issues. Uh, in nature do not require pills at times. So it's another uh, thing that we can be thankful for. Finally, the impact that these projects have on climate change and with the ability to have carbon sinks in which it does make a big difference. And again, I just, and finally, I just wanna thank everyone and I hope you enjoy the full presentation today. I will be followed by Paula, who's going to do a presentation on the project. Then it'll be followed by Leah Alexander and Adam Wilkins, who from Community Lighthouse and Trails, who will be doing a presentation. And finally, by Dale Knox from the Love of Lawrenville. And have a great day, everyone. I'm looking forward to this. Thank you. Thank you so much for those uh, greetings and welcome from the board. Uh, Kevin, uh, just for those of you who are not as familiar with our organization, uh, the Nature Conservancy of Canada is a national charity and Canada's leading not-for-profit private land conservation organization, working to protect our most important natural areas and the species they sustain. Since 1962, NCC and our partners have helped to protect 14 million hectares of land from coast to coast to coast. And you can learn more about uh, our organization at our website. Uh, so Kevin already introduced the uh, speakers we'll have today. Um, we're, we'll, uh, we'll give a little bit more of an introduction uh, of, of Leah, Adam, and Dale as, uh, as they come up uh, in, our, in our event today. Um, and I'd like to thank them uh, in advance and Kevin for, for coming together to tell this story and show how the support of the community uh, has been critical and uh, crucial for protecting the Musquash Estuary for, for nature and also for the people who enjoy it. So we are here today to celebrate what is possible when community comes together. I thank you all for taking the time out of your day to join us for this conservation announcement. We are very excited to tell you about our latest additions to the Nature Conservancy of Canada, Musquash Estuary Nature Reserve, a special habitat for wildlife and nature destination for people in the St. John area. We are celebrating a significant expansion of protected land surrounding the Musquash Estuary. Of all the places the Nature Conservancy of Canada works across New Brunswick, this area is really close to my heart because it's close to my hometown of St. John. You can drive just 15 minutes from uptown St. John and be in a true coastal wilderness area on the Bay of Fundy. And with our first parcel of land conserved in 2001, 2001 
NCC has now been working to protect this beautiful coastline along the Bay of Fundy for 20 years. I would like to start us off, since we can't be there together today, uh, by taking a moment to watch a short video and bring us virtually to the Musquash Estuary. So I'm going to get Mark to just start that off. Our relationship with nature is reflected in the world around us. We are linked to the land, water, and wildlife. And our future depends on nature and our lasting connection. Okay, not quite the same as being there in person. I hope those of you who are close enough can uh, take advantage of some of the beautiful weather that we're having lately uh, to get there and see that land for yourself. Uh, and I am so pleased to be able to announce today that another 111 hectares, nearly 250 acres, have been conserved in three parcels at Musquash Head in Laurenville, uh, another uh, area of land off Route 790 in Chance Harbor, and an additional parcel of land off the South, South Musquash Road on the western side of the estuary. The decision of these landowners to entrust their land for conservation brings the total area conserved by Nature Conservancy of Canada at the Musquash Estuary to over 2,300 hectares or nearly 5,800 acres, continuing to grow our largest conservation area in New Brunswick and in fact in all of Atlantic Canada. One of these properties is 92 acres at Musquash Head, which was donated to NCC by Explore Lornville Incorporated. This land, including the lighthouse, which will continue to be owned and managed by Explore Lornville, was acquired from the federal government over a decade ago by a local community group headed by Lornville community members, Gary Williams, Patrick Donovan, and Barb and Gordon Gilliland. They had the foresight to step forward and accept the lighthouse, which at the time risked being decommissioned and removed. This community spirit lives on and has, has evolved into Explore Lornville, whose members will be sharing more of this story shortly. Properties must meet high standards to be protected for conservation. The Nature Conservancy of Canada has been working for 20 years to protect lands surrounding the Musquash Estuary, the last fully functioning estuary in the Bay of Fundy and the province's only marine federal protected area. The Bay of Fundy is globally important for wildlife. Not only is it rich in marine life, it's on the Atlantic Flyway and is a stopover location for many species of migratory birds. Many of these birds have seen serious population declines over the last few decades and need every bit of protected habitat they can find. The efforts to have the federal government create a marine protected area were led by the local community and it is the community who encouraged NCC to start working in the area. Much of the land conserved here today has been entrusted to NCC by local families who care deeply for this land. These new properties have protected more of the coastline of the Musquash Estuary. When NCC first started working here, almost all of the land surrounding the estuary were privately owned and at risk of development. Today, over 90% of the land surrounding the estuary is protected, as well as much of the coastline between the estuary and Chance Harbor, New Brunswick. The Musquash River estuary winds through expansive salt marshes, critical for conservation, as up to 85% of these wetlands have been lost to infilling and development. These marshes are at the interface between the land and the ocean and provide homes and feeding areas for birds and fish. Though this area has a long history of human settlement and use, there are beautiful forests surrounding the estuary, including some very old coastal red spruce forest. This large protected area supports wide ranging wildlife like moose and bobcat, and the forests on NCC conserved lands are accessible through a network of trails along the eastern side of the estuary. And I am equally excited today to celebrate the official opening of the new Bourneville Link Trail that connects NCC's Black Beach and Five Fathom Hole Trails. Thanks to the vision and hard work of Leah and Adam and NCC volunteers, particularly our trail stewards, Gary Hissop and Trevor Fotheringham, 
20 kilometers of coastal wilderness trails, starts in Laurenville and now connects all the way through to the community of Prince of Wales. This is a result of a remarkable amount of time and energy and I am inspired every day by your dedication, Gary, Trevor, Adam and Leah. And with that, I'm going to turn you over to Leah and Adam. Leah and Adam are the amazing folks behind Laurenville, Explore Laurenville Incorporated. Leah was born and raised in Laurenville and her family has lived here for four generations. Her partner Adam is from the St. John area and is now a permanent and enthusiastic resident of Laurenville. Both Adam and Leah work in healthcare, Leah as a registered nurse at the St. John Regional Hospital and Adam as a nurse practitioner in the Loch Lomond Villa, nursing home in St. John. And they share a love of the outdoors and a passion for conservation. When they saw the need to protect the iconic lighthouse at Musquash Head, and they stepped forward to restore it. And I know I speak for everyone here when I say thank you for all the hours you have dedicated to this project. So I'm turning it over to you now, uh, Leah and Adam. Hi, thank you for that wonderful introduction. Um, I'm Leah. I'm Adam. And we are, as Paula said, the founders of um, Explore Laurenville. Um, so we'll just give you kind of a little background about how this all came to be. So I, as Paula said, grew up in Laurenville. Um, my family was very um, outdoorsy and always instilled a passion for the outdoors uh, in me and, and my brother. I grew up watching my mother um, play a role in petitioning against the dump in Laurenville. And I remember as a small child going door to door with flyers and collecting names. That campaign was successful. The dump was no longer to be in Laurenville, on paper anyway, but the truth of the matter was that Laurenville was and continued to be um, a location where illegal dumping was rampant. A drive down the Birchall Road or Black Beach Road was more likely to produce views of old mattresses, TVs, and tires than it was any wildlife. So fast forward to 2014. I was now in university and this was still a problem. I wanted to help the situation and I knew it would need more than just me picking up garbage one piece at a time. So one day, like late summer, I took my dog and I tried to walk from Colson Cove to the lighthouse. It was a hard track, very overgrown, no trail at all, um, but I was in absolute awe of the views. Um, I didn't understand, or I couldn't wrap my head around how I had possibly lived here for 20 so years and did not know that these amazing views were just in my backyard. So soon after that, I kind of dived into it full tilt, um, started with just using a hatchet and a set of loppers. So as you can imagine, the progress was very slow, but I love the work and the time spent in nature. I walked and rewalked the coast, trying to find the best route with the most scenic views, whether that was the rocky coast and the ocean or some interesting rock formation or extra large tree that I had to have the trail go by. To me, it was always more than just a hiking trail. It was an opportunity to show off this area and what it has to offer, um, to get people excited and passionate about it. I really wanted to change the narrative of the area to inclu include hikers and bird watchers, people running, people who would enjoy nature and would become champions and stewards of the area. My idea and the end goal in the beginning was to decrease illegal dumping, but the, it has grown to be su such a bigger, bigger thing than that now. The Musquash Head Lighthouse, as Paula mentioned, um, sits on a very isolated rocky outcropping, um, and it is the focal point of both Split Rock Trail and Troy's Trail. We were approached about two years ago with the news that the lighthouse didn't soon receive some much needed work that it would need to be taken down. Although it is a fully functioning lighthouse, um, as Paula mentioned, DFO divested the structure itself to a community group over 10 years ago. And, and we as Explorer Laurenville have taken over that community group. We could not imagine these trails, the area or the community losing this structure, such a piece of history and a landmark that the only logical thing to do was to figure out a way to save it. So in the spring of 2020, uh, contractors Roy Proctor, who's a big supporter of the Musquash area and NCC and Kevin Barrio of Barrio Builders actually approached NCC about donating some of their expertise, time and labor to assist in restoring the Musquash Head Lighthouse. 
And we, uh, Leah and I didn't actually know about this right away. So then Paula reached out to, to Leah and I to, to ask again if we would be interested in taking over the lighthouse because she had done this before and we kind of said, you know, down the road a little bit. And uh, when she reached out again, Explorer Lornville Incorporated was born. Uh, Cecil McCaver, another uh, Lornville local, rounds out the, our newly founded community nonprofit group. And given her work in the area with Split Rock and Troy's Trails and her involvement with the Nature Conservancy of the Conservancy of Canada, we partnered with them to fundraise to save the lighthouse. So meanwhile, I'm just gonna jump back a bit. In December of 2019, Lee and I had also begun bushwhacking to scope out how we could somehow connect the Black Beach Trail loop in Warrenville, which begins at uh, Black Beach where Troy's Trail ends, the trail that we'd already built, and the Five, Five Fathom Hole Trail, which begins in Prince of Wales uh, and ends somewhat anticlimactically along the coast towards Black Beach area. This area is very rugged, isolated, numerous water crossings and a very tricky tidal crossing, all of which we soon realized was likely while the trails were never actually successfully connected. However, we spent an incredible amount of time mapping out a possible location for this new trail and we were slowly sorting things out that would need to be done to accomplish this. So getting back to when Paula reached out in the spring of last year, uh, we partnered with NCC and we learned that they were also hard at work at acquiring more land uh, in the area. And also that, you know, the previous uh, community group that looked after the lighthouse had, had, you know, promised to donate land that came with the lighthouse to NCC and that the community group would retain the lighthouse and some immediate land surrounding there. So our, our goal of Explore Longville was to honor that previous agreement. And we also told uh, NCC that we, thought that there was a way to connect the trail. Uh, it would be a ton of work, but it could be done. And uh, very quickly, uh, what Explore Lawrenville thought was a, a large but achievable fundraising goal of about $5,000 to cover the remaining costs to restore the lighthouse became a massive project to donate and conserve land at Musquash Head and, and beyond uh, to restore the lighthouse and improve and expand the hiking trails with a total goal of 30 to $35,000. Uh, which Leah and I, when we were on that Zoom call for the very first time learning that, pretty sure we almost fell off our chair and Paula probably still remembers that pretty vividly. But there was also a global pandemic going on uh, and Leah and I wouldn't be traveling as much or doing anything that we normally do that keeps us extremely busy. So we both jumped into the effort headfirst knowing that the tight-knit Lawrenceville community and the ever-growing hiking trail running community would probably give us a chance. Uh, in addition to having NCC's national reach to help fundraise for that. So Roy and Kevin's involvement led to the donation of a scissor lift and work immediately began to prepare the lighthouse for restoration. Explore Lawrenceville and NCC held a media event to launch the fundraising campaign and, and coverage and the initial verbal and social media support was awesome. And donations slowly trickled in and then Dale Knox of, of Tabby File Atlantic and his family who have strong Lawrenceville ties and have always supported uh, Leah and I's efforts with the trails as well as the lighthouse holding a very special place in their hearts, reached out and expressed an interest to, to make a donation and help in any way that they could. Uh, he ended up challenging many of his friends and other local businesses, even larger corporations and some of his own family to support this campaign. And things really took off from there resulting in numerous, very significant donations. We had someone sell calendars, uh, which really was a really cool thing. Uh, the the Musquash Head Lighthouse is featured on the cover of the of the calendar, albeit in its previous uh, weathered state, and uh, that really raised the profile. Others offered to sell clothing and make a donation. Uh, people offered to do signs, help with trail work, share on social media. Just really, just a you know a groundswell and, and community outreach movement that that took off. And NCC was unable to secure the JT Clark Family Foundation of Fredericton, who would match every donation in November and December. And this put things really over the top. So by the start of 2021, we had surpassed the larger fundraising goal by more than double. Uh, we had over more than uh, 300 donors and donations were still coming in. So all throughout the fundraising campaign, Lee and I worked along with you know, many other friends and family on cutting the new trail, uh, now called the Lawrenceville Link. Things really ramped up in, in March of 2021 and continued with more support from, as, as Paula mentioned, Gary and Trevor, uh, the trail stewards, as well as Tim Barry, uh, a local kind of trail professional and uh, outdoors enthusiast, 
and uh, he assessed the five trails and gave some recommendations for improvements as well as some of his own work on the trails. And then the past two months, we basically spent every day, evening, weekend, all of our free time working on these trails. I don't know, uh, we, you know, Gary, Gary, Trevor, Lee and I basically formed our own uh, COVID bubble uh, since we didn't have many in our 15 bubble in New Brunswick and, and work constantly on the new trail and the other trail. And we actually just finished with the installation of trail signs on Sunday morning. So the new trail, the Lundle Link, it's a 3.5 kilometer linear trail with an extra one kilometer high tide route uh, to get around that really pesky tidal crossing. And it connects Black Beach and Five Fathom Hole trails uh, in addition to connecting with Split Rock and Troy's trail. And this whole thing forms a 16.8 or 17.8 if you do the, need to do the tidal crossing, uh, one way linear trail. And the joining of these trails led to the creation of the Musquash Estuary Coastal Trail System. So we decided to give the, this whole area and trail system a name, and that includes over 20 kilometers of connected trails in the area. You know, beautiful coastal and inland hiking trails, as, as Paul described. So the link offers uh, scenic views of Frenchman's Creek, Musquash Harbor, a waterfall, lots of elevation changes, that tidal crossing, several bridges, access to Cheeseman Beach, a really nice beach that really didn't have much access before. And there's lots of scenic lookouts along the way. Uh, Lee and I have hiked the entire trail from Split Rock Trail in Lawrenville to the end, Five Fathom Hole Trail in Prince of Wales, a trek that takes over five hours. I've also run it going the other way, taking much less time, but is a, just a crazy workout. Um, so just kind of the, dubbing it, uh, the Mech Trails offer rugged and rocky coastline hiking, scenic views of the Bay of Fundy, Musquash Harbor, and Renchman's Creek. And uh, with you know the restored Musquash Head Lighthouse as, a, as such a prominent feature and kind of everywhere you look is protected land from the Nature Conservancy, which is you know a really significant feature of this area. Um, as, as Paula mentioned, and as Adam mentioned too, like Lawrenville is such a small, um, tight knit community, and you can find families living here today carrying like one of the same last ten names that resided here when my great grandparents lived here, my grandparents, my parents, and now Adam and I. And when we started this campaign, I was confident that the community would want to support this. But to the extent um, that people stepped forward uh, really blew us away. Like we get pretty emotional talking about it. Um, and just the support that NCC has offered through this whole um, journey has been more than incredible. And we could not have done this um, without NCC and without everyone's support, the numerous volunteers that have helped us, everyone who shared everything on social media and helped us spread the word. And we are, forever and eternally grateful and so proud of what has been accomplished by this community. We'll pass it back to you, Paula. Thank you so much, Adam and Leah. Um, I think everybody is understanding how much work has, has gone into this. Um, I will mention that the Black Beach Trail and Five Fathom Hole Trails that uh, were built originally by NCC, they've been there over 10 years and Every year, people have said, "Can't we put the? Can't we link these together?" And nobody could figure out how to do it. Uh, I have learned working with you guys for the last couple of years that uh, never say never to the two of you. You will find a way. You did find a way. Um, and I, I just uh, thinking, listening to all that you're saying, uh, that you really embody the expression of be the change that you want to see in the world. And uh, I think. Um, yeah, I've been really honored to work with you and, and with others in the community of Laurenville. Um, you're right, the, the community spirit is, is very strong there and uh, it was very clear throughout this campaign. And, uh, and on that, I will introduce our next special guest today who is a son of Laurenville and was an important uh, catalyst to this project as uh, Adam and Leah were saying. Uh, Dale Knox is originally from Laurenville. He and his family still live in the region and have strong, lot, st strong ties to the Laurenville community uh, with his daughter still living there today. Uh, Dale has been a long supporter and proponent of the local hiking trails and the Musquash Head Lighthouse means a lot to Dale and to the Knox family. So I'm going to turn things over to Dale to tell us a little bit about uh, why he became involved in this project. 
Thanks, uh, thanks very much, Paula. Um, I, I knew that I really didn't want to follow Adam and Leah, uh, and uh, I, I really didn't want to. Uh, they did a great job, and I think, uh, you know, if I if I were to put everything into one uh, small clip, it would be, uh, you just have to listen to their passion, and then it's not hard to figure out why people want to be involved uh, with uh, with with them both. So it's been a long time since I lived in Lornville. But I, I still consider it home. Um, you know, as, as Leah mentioned, a lot of folks that, that ended up in Lornville, you know, came in the late 1800s uh, from Northern Ireland, a place called Kilkeel. Uh, and, and a lot of those names there uh, still reside in Lornville. Uh, and in Kilkeel, there's still a Knox uh, General store. And my mom used to run a store in, in Lornville, uh, which connected us to, to lots of folks. Um, you know, Leah's, uh, Leah's parents, good friends of, of my siblings, uh, her uncles are all friends, uh, you know, so the connections are, are really uh, endless. Uh, so really, uh, Leah and Adam both inspired uh, myself and, and my wife, Wendy, to donate after seeing all the work that they had put into the trails. Um, and obviously, once you're involved, you want others to participate as well. And then, you know, exponential growth happens. Uh, you know, the more folks that you can expose and, and, and tell the story to, uh, and when they, you know, see the work that's been done uh, by these two, uh, you know, it, it, I'm not gonna say it's easy to open up your checkbook, but it's easy to open up your checkbook. Uh, the, you know, when I was a kid, Black, Black Beach was always uh, very popular, uh, not so much for, for hiking, um, and I remember, you know, being younger and, and, and going to, to see the lighthouse, but, uh, you know, later in life, uh, when we were able to, to see what Leah was up to, Wendy and I were, were hiking one day, we were on Troy's trail. And I think that was right around the, the that Leah must've been having some conversations with Paula at NCC about the lighthouse. And, you know, we're in, we're in the middle of the trail, you know, on a sunny Saturday afternoon and. And when she was telling me about the uh, the lighthouse uh, potential and and you know looking to to get involved in that, I just said, "Listen, if you need help, give me a call." And uh, and thankfully uh, she did. Um, and so what the trails uh, that that they've worked on for all these years so hard um, has done for me, it's given me a better appreciation of the whole musquash estuary, the preservation, and how critical that is. Um, and so to me, I made the connection very quickly that the restoration of the lighthouse and all the work on the trails is really a, a unique way to expose folks to the entire area, um, you know, to, to enjoy the beauty, to enjoy the scenery, but more importantly, to see why it is that um, this is such an important piece of nature and very quickly, you know, you understand why it's so important to preserve and protect uh, so to me, Leah and Adam and Explore Lornville are all about the best of, of my memories of Lornville, which is, which is really community. Paula mentioned in her remarks, uh, Barb Gilliland was, was uh, with Gary Williams, was part of the original uh, group that, that had taken over the ownership of the, of the lighthouse. Barb Gilliland was my kindergarten teacher. And, and thankfully she, you know, gave me a passing grade. So I was able to go on to school. So I, I thank Barb for that. But when, when I heard Barb's name, I was thinking, yeah, I, I remember when that happened. And I also then think, wow, you know, we're talking about three or four different generations that are now involved in, in, uh, in preserving this, this very important piece of, of Lornville history. So, so through their hard work and dedication, um, they really brought the community of Lornville together. They brought the business community together. Um, they brought the trail and hiking community together uh, for a united purpose. And, and to me, that's pretty cool. Um, so if there's anyone on the, the call that has not visited the area yet, I'd, I'd encourage you to do it. I know there's lots of donors uh, that are on. I thank you for that. But I, I think, you know, there's, there's an even greater um, cause and, and, and greater need uh, to continue to donate and make sure that we are doing all the things that we can do to, to help support folks like 
um, Leah and Adam and Cecil and Explore Lornville in, in the work that they're doing, but more importantly, the Nature Conservancy of Canada because they do important work every day. And I think, um, you know, it's, it's something that when you have the opportunity and the ability to do that, I think it's, uh, it's something that, that we all should do. So thanks very much for the opportunity uh, to, uh, to speak to everyone today. And my heartfelt thanks to, to Adam and Leah for everything that they've done, they do, and then I know that they'll continue to do in the future. Thanks. Thank you so much, Dale. We're so grateful for your support of this project and your encouragement and uh, for sharing your memories uh, and passion uh, for Laurenville. Um, I, I do wanna take some time now to thank the, the literally hundreds of donors who joined Dale uh, in supporting this project and who were inspired to, uh, to, to be a part of this. Uh, I'd like to start with a specific thank you to the, the donors who uh, made the scale of this work possible, including all of the land conservation uh, pieces that we talked about earlier on. Uh, first of all, the Crabtree Foundation. This is a, a family foundation with strong ties to New Brunswick. And for many years, the Crabtree Foundation has been a true champion for conservation uh, for the Nature Conservancy of Canada throughout New Brunswick and has enabled us to respond to urgent opportunities across the province. They are passionate about the Bay of Fundy and I know that uh, Musquash Estuary holds a special place in their heart. Uh, the Government of Canada, uh, the Department of Environment and Climate Change's Natural Heritage Conservation Program uh, has allowed us to complete these and, and other land securement projects uh, across New Brunswick and across the country. This program is greatly accelerating NCC's efforts to protect important sites, including at the Musquash Estuary, and to help Canada meet our international goal of protecting 17% of our lands and inland waters. Uh, Leanne Adam mentioned the JT Clark Family Foundation, uh, who are based in Fredericton. They issued a challenge to the community late in 2020, agreeing to match community donations to help us meet our goal and raise the final amount needed for the project. The excitement and momentum that this created uh, allowed us not only to, to meet our goal, but surpass it and encourage many, uh, many locals to, uh, to donate. Uh, and finally, the, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service through the North American Wetland Conservation Act is an important contributor to projects that protect migratory bird habitat throughout Canada because birds don't see political borders. Um, and also, it's uh, going to take a little while to run through all of the names, but we wanted to take this time and take a moment to recognize all of our donors who made significant donations and each and every one of you were important in allowing us to reach our goal to protect this land, to complete the restoration of the lighthouse and protect it for the future, and to do uh, the, the safety work. The, uh, uh, of course, you heard a lot of the on the ground work has been volunteer based, but uh, some of the supplies and uh, assessments that were needed on the trail. And uh, these donations will continue to, to have an impact here into the future. Uh, and make sure that we have a, a safety net here um, to, to take care of uh, any needs that are, are coming up uh, and, and make sure that the trails and the lighthouse remain here and available for everyone to enjoy for many, many years to come. And finally, I want to uh, add a, a special thank you to the in-kind supporters to the project. Uh, most of these were mentioned as well by Adam and Leah. Um, Kevin Barrio of Barrio Builders came forward with the expertise to do the work on the lighthouse and also uh, provided much of, well, provided all of the labor uh, in kind uh, for the work. Ready Rental Limited of St. John uh, and Sherwin Williams Paint Store provided uh, equipment, uh, uh, either donations or uh, supplies at cost. And a special thank you to our NCC volunteer and donor Roy Proctor who helped to uh, organize this and uh, really get the lighthouse restoration work underway. So 
again, huge thank you to all who were involved and, uh, and, and I hope that you will continue to follow the work that we're doing here. This is, is not by any means the end. We're gonna keep protecting land. We're gonna keep uh, maintaining these trails and uh, encouraging people to, to come and enjoy this site for many, many years to come. I uh, will thank you all again for joining us, uh, for learning about the work at the Musquash Estuary and uh, invite you to uh, learn more by visiting um, the Nature Conservancy of Canada website, uh, or there's an, an email there that you can contact us at. Uh, you can also find directions to, uh, you can find directions to our trails and learn more about uh, the site by visiting naturedestinations.ca. This will uh, give you information on uh, all of the sites which are accessible uh, across the country on Nature Conservancy of Canada properties, uh, but we'll also direct you, uh, provide the information you need for your next visit to the Musquash Estuary Trails. For future updates uh, on webinars or events on in your area, you can check out our events page at natureconservancy.ca. Uh, backslash events. And stay tuned for the link to today's webinar recording. You should receive that in a follow up email in the next few days. And on behalf of the Nature Conservancy of Canada, thank you again for joining us and have a wonderful rest of your day. We hope uh, next year we can actually do this on, in person and hope to see you all again soon. Thank you.